Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 455, Treatment Choices and Sexuality with Regard to Breast Cancer and Colon Cancer Risks from Obesity. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Let's start with breast cancer. Breast cancer is such a scary thing for women, Mm -hmm. for the men that love them. And men occasionally get it, but I mean... That's very rare. It's very rare. And when people hear breast cancer, they think they're going to die. But that's not an absolute. It's not even as much as it used to be. It's better and better and better. And so we had read an article that was in the Post-Dispatch recently, Mm -hmm. a, a letter to Dr. Roach. 68-year-old woman, identified with breast cancer, Mm -hmm. who was looking at what's the best way for me to go given my age and given that I'm still sexually active and I want to remain sexually Mm -hmm. active. And she had done a lot of research. She referenced that research to him and she said, based on her medical data, she was looking at getting a lumpectomy and not a mastectomy. So, So her circumstance was 68 years old with a very early breast cancer. So one that was found in one place, not all, different different um, um, masses, just one mass, and, and not in her lymph nodes. Not a, not a, in her lymph nodes, but you can never tell that until you go in for surgery. So okay. even when they do a lumpectomy, just this is just yeah. information about how they do things. If you go for a, a lumpectomy, they still do a sentinel node, meaning they find the largest node in your armpit, which is where the breast drains into the armpit. So it, in other words, lymph system and blood system kind of go through the armpit and they drop off little cells and that's called a metastasis. So if your cancer has gotten out of that little tiny little mass that we found on mammogram and plan to take out, then you're going to find it first in those lymph nodes. If it's not in those lymph nodes, then it's confined to the breast. And they got it early enough. And they yeah, got it early all. enough so that it's not outside your breast. It hasn't metastasized. It's not it, It's not as severe as it would be if one of the lymph nodes was positive. So, there, so she gave the doctor that information, and she mm-hmm. said, what I'm looking at is what are my survival rates? What can I estimate and she based on a, my treatment choices? So she has the easiest to treat, an estrogen positive, uh, progesterone positive, their receptor site positive tumors. So those tumors are sensitive to medications that actually attack the receptor sites, basically keep you from getting estrogen, keep you from having estrogen to feed that, and keep you from having progesterone to feed the receptor sites. So that's the kind of cancer she had. Hers type 2 or hers 2 cancers are much more aggressive, and they have to be treated differently. So we're talking about the hormone-based cancers of the breast. So go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interfere. Well, no, no, so so she said. I just wanted to tone this down. I'm looking at making choices. Should I get a lumpectomy? Should I get a mastectomy? And whichever one of these I choose, is there something that you know that you can tell me that will help me keep my sex drive. Mm -hmm. And so that's what she was asking for, is information uh, about that. And then he assessed her data. And he said, look at all your tests and look at things that I know. Mm -hmm. Uh, What I would say is the standard choice recommendation is Mm -hmm. a mastectomy. But if you Mm -hmm. get a lumpectomy, then here's what you need to know. And so if you get a lumpectomy and a sentinel node biopsy, you're less likely to have lymphedema, meaning your your arms swelling up because they've taken out all the lymph nodes with a mastectomy. So that's the choice between lumpectomy versus mastectomy. Mastectomy, you have the swelling and the lymph nodes are usually all taken out. So there's no drainage of the fluid. You don't even know you have drainage of your fluid, but your fluid drains through these lymph nodes. Right. 
uh, all the time, 24 seven. So when those are gone, all the fluid stays down here in your arm. So that's, that's the biggest problem, mastectomy. Lumpectomy doesn't generally have that problem. So that's her choice, why she would choose lumpectomy. Then she says, so if I get the lumpectomy, if I choose that, and she was leaning toward that, right. then what's next? Well, and so then you're saying if you have the type of cancer that has the estrogen and progesterone receptor sites, mm -hmm. that that's where the cancer is. Mm -hmm. If you get estrogen, if you get hormone treatment, you got to make sure that you don't, don't get estrogen or progesterone. Right. You can't which, have those two. Which brings us to your specialty and the things that you know, which right. are not in Dr. Roach's article. Right. She was asking about libido. He didn't really address that because he was more interested in making sure that she knew that she could have the lumpectomy. And then if she had, if she was offered chemo for this very early, very uh, non-aggressive tumor, right. that it would only improve her uh, life life expectancy or uh, her, her by Ten, one, tenure by window. One, yeah, by one percent. By one percent. Her risk of dying would only go up one percent if she didn't have that. Right. And so he also said that it would go up by it would go up by two percent if she didn't do the um, medication like Arimidex that shuts down production of estrogen in your body because you make it in your fat. So you make estrogen in your fat. So if you have a, a estrogen sensitive tumor, you don't want to make estrogen in your fat. Right. You want to block that. So that's what Arimidex does. Okay. But what we do with our patients is addresses her other question. Right. What we do is our patients generally come to us saying, I can't take my hormones anymore, meaning estrogen and progesterone. But I need something because I'm having hot flashes and I have no libido and my muscle mass is going away and I feel terrible. So so they say that and your response is, I have something for that. Right. And it won't increase any of your risk for breast for the breast cancer that you have, no. which is estrogen relevant breast cancer. Right. So we're going to give you the Arimidex to protect your breast from getting estrogen, mm -hmm. your fat from making estrogen. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to give you the answer that will restore and retain your libido. So, right. you, so it's win-win. So basically, you get a different hormone, one that doesn't cause uh, you to have uh, any more recurrence of a breast cancer or anything, any spread. You get testosterone. In fact, it decreases your risk of getting your breast cancer back right. or having it recur. So testosterone is both good for preventing you from getting um, a recurrence and, and there's lots of studies that show that, but it also fixes your symptoms, your symptoms of no sex drive, no... Um, no energy, uh, hot flashes all night. So in general, that's the treatment I give to my patients, especially if they're on a, an Arimidex-like drug. Mm -hmm. So aromatase, aromacin, there's three or four of them, letrozole. So those are the ones that they usually are put on by their um, oncologist, and then I give them the testosterone. Right. And that tends to be very effective. But, but your patients. generic layperson hears breast cancer, and then they find out it's estrogen-related breast cancer, and then they say, I can't take hormones. Right. And they say and hormones they blanketly. Yeah. The, and there's hundreds, the, well, there's many hormones in your body. They're not hundreds, but there's, there are hormones. There are other kinds of communicators that are liquid, like uh -huh. hormones, in your body. And, and it's not, estrogen is not just the only hormone. Right. So when they're saying hormones, they mean... Estrogen and progesterone, they don't mean testosterone, so you can still have that. Well, I'm really glad you clarified that because when I read this, not being a doctor, and I read mm -hmm. the paper religiously, and I find mm -hmm. this information, and I read it, and, and to me, the, the thing that stood out the most is, okay, the title says sexuality. How do I keep my sexuality? That's what she's asking about. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't really address that in, in his follow-up. I mean, he goes more into the mechanics of her specific well, issues. That's the difference between... What I do and what other doctors do, doctors who are traditional doctors are trying to keep people alive. Absolutely. And, and quality I of life that. I'm is not, not challenging what he said. No. But, I mean, and I don't either. Quality of life is not their is not their first is not their goal. Their goal is to just keep, keep you, alive. you alive. My goal is keep yeah. you alive safely and with quality of life. And so what we want women to hear is that if you have estrogen dominant breast cancer, that can be treated. And you mm -hmm. can still have hormones that help you keep a normal, healthy sex life if that's important to you, that's relevant to you. Hormones that aren't estrogen or progesterone, right. but testosterone. So 
the, and the safest way to take them is pellets, which is what we do. Put them under the skin and forget about them for four months. Right. And that's the safest way to take it because it turns into, it doesn't turn into estrogen. All right. So hopefully that was helpful for you. And thank you for listening as always. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.